almost tempted to speak from my heart and pull a Monique. <laughs> <laughs> and, and do it. <laughs> and just tell you how much I love you. So thank you, Presidente. Thank you to the TAs. Uh, thank you to the friends and family who are here. And thank you, teachers. I see myself reflected in all of your stories. And I wish I was talking about love, but today we're going to get a little bit dirty. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to talk about impurities. And this is a little story about purification. And it all started, this story takes place about two years ago in my second favorite coffee shop in New York City, near Union Square. My favorite coffee shop now being the Three Jewels Cafe. <laughs> and I was in line for a few minutes waiting to get my coffee uh, when all of a sudden a lady walks in and she caught me in line and I awkwardly tried to tell her hey I was here first you know and she looked back at me and just dismissed me and I got triggered <laughs> <laughs> if you're a New Yorker I'm sure you've faced some of that but I knew the second register was about to open, so I then cut her in line. <laughs> and I felt proud. <laughs> because I showed her, you know, we leave. <laughs> I warned you. So, oh. so this is me telling my friends immediately uh, about my little victory. But if you can judge me by my, the timestamps, pretty soon I felt embarrassed. Um, and I started breaking down exactly what happened. Like, why did this little thing bother me so much? Like, why did she touch in me that I reacted this way? And you see, I've always been fascinated with the human mind, with mostly with other people's minds. Uh, I grew up in a big family, uh, so I've always been fascinated with people, with understanding them. Um, and I've been a good student of it. <laughs> the best books on conflict resolution and negotiation will teach you uh, how to become a better operator in life. They'll teach you about power dynamics, about how to become a master at influence. And the really good ones will focus on people and how to understand them, how to become a master of that influence. But what they can't teach you is about yourself, because they might give you that 50%, but you have to bring that other 50% and do the work. Because at some point in life, you start realizing that it's not exactly just what you want to get out of life that matters, but rather who you are and how to live your life starts becoming more important. <laughs> And this is not an issue of morality. This is not spiritual salvation. This is merely a functional principle. Because resolving any inner conflict and knowing yourself lets you operate in a more pragmatic way. You enjoy the process a little bit more. And it gives you a new level of agency. So going back to the cafe, what other reasons could she have had to cut me in line? Um, she could have been running late. She could have been sick. She could have had a sick child at home. Or even worse, she could have been right. Maybe it was her who was there first and I didn't see her. But out of all those stories, I chose the worst one. Because rarely do we see the truth of things. We don't react to what happens. We react to our perception of what happens. And of all those stories, I chose the worst one. But the thing is, I didn't really choose it. My mind there jumped there automatically, out of habit. The Buddha said, with our mind, we create the world. And one thing is to know that, but the other one is to know it viscerally and to truly understand it. Because if things are coming at you and you're reacting, you're a victim and you're spiteful. But once you realize you're the owner of those feelings, you're the source of those feelings, that's power. 
if there's something we all have in common in this room is that we all have a big, big wish. We have that bodhicitta in us. But let me tell you that if you turn on the news and if you look, take a cold hard look at the world and you're getting angry at what you're seeing, if you're angry because the world isn't lovable enough, if you're angry because things aren't playing how you want them to be, at the very least, I hope you can see the irony in that, the cognitive dissonance. Because if you want peace, you better than be peaceful. And once you're a being of peace, once you are in love with the world, once you're a statement of love, now you can get angry. And that's very different. This is a page from Be Here Now from Ram Das, where he says, hippies create the police and the police create the hippies. If you're in polarity, you're creating opposites. You're creating polar opposites. You can only protest effectively when you love the person whose ideas you're protesting against as much as you love yourself. The minute you pause between your reaction and your response, when you allow yourself that space, you're able to see the other person behind the drama. And whether they are there or not, that's their own predicament, that's their own karma. That's none of your business. But that allows you the space to be able to show up and to say no, to fight for what you want, to protest against those you need to protest. And you do it in a way where your actions start to become healing rather than divisive. So why do we meditate? Why do we purify? Why do we clean up our game? At least for me, because I don't want to get angry anymore for getting my coffee 30 seconds after, <laughs> after I was hoping for. Because I want to have space to amplify what I truly want in my life. And I don't wish any of you suffering. I don't wish myself any suffering. But if it comes and when it comes, I wish you the grace that comes from that. And the next time that somebody gets me angry, thank you. <laughs> thank you for showing me where I lack. Thank you for showing me where my work is. Thank you for showing me that I get angry because things are not exactly like I want them to be. And I meditate and I purify because at some point you just get tired of it. Because you want to move on. Because you realize that what you want in life more than winning, more than getting what you want, more than getting your coffee on time, is to be free. And thank you for coming to my Met Talk. Yeah.